Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome onto stage two-time Emmy-nominated comedian, Mr. Loiso Gola. Thank you. Oh, how are you guys? So the Springboks won. I don't give a fuck. I, <laughs> I'll pretend like I give a shit. I don't care if the Springboks win. Listen, to all black people, I'm sorry for the econ. Black people, just every building, theater, anything. <laughs> it's like fucking the air conditioning is always killing black people. <laughs> You're like, no, just relax. It's all, it's, it's all good. Yeah. We're all friends. And we started a bit late, and I would like to apologize to white people for being late. Black people, fuck you, you're always late. I'm not apologizing to you, fuck you. You are late the whole week. It's crazy. For those some people who don't know the, all the official languages, I'm going to use a lot of languages today. Some, you know, all over the place. So don't be scared. Just go with it. Just go with it. Cape Town. So I bought a place, here's the thing, I bought a place, and on the first day I moved into this place, we moved in, and the following morning I heard um, a bell. The bell went off, and we're like, okay, no one knows where we live. I wonder who that could be the neighbor trying to introduce himself. No, it was this guy standing there. Brother, can I speak to the madam, please? I'm like, yeah? <laughs> like, madam, what are you talking about? No, I just want to talk to the madam. I'm like, no, there's no madam, but how can I help you? Uh, no, I'm looking for a job, brother, man. I'm looking for a job. Like, oh, you're looking for a job? What kind of job? I can do anything. I can paint. I can do the cross. I will, but I want to talk to the madam, man. <laughs> so, I say, no, this, this is not a madam. This is, this is my place. And I swear to God, the guy looks at me in my eyes, goes, me, work for a dark guy, you tash? <laughs> <laughs> All I remember thinking was, Emuna, that's no way to approach unemployment. Eh? <laughs> Join your union, get a job, chief. Don't be stubborn, my man. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I work for a black person. Oh, God, that's crazy. I grew up uh, all over Cape Town. I, I grew up in Googs. Uh, we lived in uh, Orbs at some point. We lived in Claremont at some point. But I remember when I lived in, in Observatory, I used to hang out in Salt River a lot. And what I realized about colored people is that everyone in a colored community has a nickname. If you have a big head, everyone just calls you Copa. That's it. <laughs> Wherever you go, just Copa, that's right, that's Copa, that's Copa, this is Copa. He's, he's, he's big, man, it's Copa, Copa, that's Copa. No one questions it, you'll be 60 years old, everyone's like, nah, that's Copa, that's Copa. <laughs> At your funeral, you're 80 years old, so you're dying, now we're here to bury Copa. <laughs> you're like, what the fuck is going on? There was this other guy, he, was, he, had, he used to play soccer with him, he had big eyes, and he was slow at soccer, slow! We used to call him Totas. But, but everyone used to call him Toti, just for short. Toti, Toti. Nah, that's Toti, it's Kaxlo, Kaxlo. <laughs> but the weirdest thing, if you're the dark guy in a colored neighborhood, everyone just calls you Kafir. It is the most casual racism you'll ever see in your life. People will walk up to you and meet my friend Kafir. You're like, whoa, 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 relax. <laughs> nah, he doesn't mind. We call him Kafir all the time, doesn't matter, doesn't mind. Like, no, you can't call people cover, bro. No, he doesn't mind. 20 years you call him cover, he doesn't mind, doesn't mind. You're like, no, bro, you can't call people that. His name is Ricardo, his name is Ricardo. Say Ricardo. Now you're standing there trying. Hey, Ricardo. Hey, Ricardo. Ricardo. Say cover, you'll hear you. <laughs> you're like, no, you can't. Guys, no, we've come too far as a country to call people cover, huh? please. Huh? I realize also in Cape Town, you're the only people in the whole entire fucking world who can use the word poos properly. <laughs> like when the people in Cape Town say the word poos, it really rings in your ears. You fucking hear the person is saying poos. Everyone else you try, you go to Joburg, people don't know how to say the word poos properly. Hey, is there poos? That right, is there poos, sham? Is there poos? It doesn't have the ring. Hey, how is there poos? He was, yeah, acting like a poos the whole day. There's a poos, poos, poos. He's a puss, that guy, hi, hi, he's a puss. Yo, yeah, we are a puss, my man. Yo, he's a pussy. You, hi, we a pussy, we a pussy. You go to Durban, people don't know how to use the word. 
In Durban, he's such a puss. What a puss, he's a humongous puss. He's a puss, why are you acting like a puss? But in Cape Town, you guys, the, the word is decorated. It has fireballs, Joe. It's coming to your face, Joe. It's got decoration. Your master is the doubler. Your pastor wants a brew. So talk to you. Suppose. <laughs> then you are there going, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Oscar Pistorius, that guy is crazy, bro. Oscar Pistorius is the maddest man ever. You know why? He shot his girlfriend in the face on Valentine's Day. Guys, you don't understand. On Valentine's Day, he shot his girlfriend. Guys, that's like shooting Santa Claus on Christmas. <laughs> no respect. I mean, Valentine's is the one day where we specifically ask you, don't shoot your girlfriend in the face, see? I remember on that particular Valentine, I had forgotten to give my girlfriend flowers, but she was so happy to be alive, sham. <laughs> sham, she forgot everything. I <laughs> Ah, oh, it's crazy. Here's the thing, I was watching the court case and they were interviewing all kinds of witnesses, neighbors, everyone. I was so paranoid as a neighbor. Now when I hear anything next door, I don't fuck around, I knock. Three o'clock in the morning, so, sorry guys, I heard a noise here. Yeah. What's going on? Are you playing cricket? There was a bang here, what? I don't fuck, hey guys, I'm, I want to know, guys. Hey, I've got the sweetest neighbor, and early he said we were just having a party and a balloon popped. Oh, car, what color balloon? <laughs> don't fuck, guys, don't play games. Just write everything down. <laughs> Purple balloon, quarter past three. Okay. Because when you're in court and they're asking you difficult questions, how do you know it was quarter past three? You're like, I wrote it down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's no ums and arms, Joe. You don't want to be like that guy, Mr. Dixon. You know Mr. Dixon, the sound expert, his only job was to differentiate between a cricket bat hitting a door and a gunshot and they brought an expert. They could have just called any black person. Any black person knows the sound of a gunshot. A gunshot. If a gunshot went off now, black people in the parking lot quickly will be in the parking lot paying for parking, gone, and to home. White people will still be here going, I wonder what that sound was, we're not sure. I wonder, it was like a big bang, I'm not sure. So Mr. Dixon's only job was to differentiate between a cricket bat hitting a door and a gunshot. He was in court, they asked him questions, couldn't answer their questions, giving stupid, stupid, stupid answers. They put it to him, gone. Mr. Dixon, what instruments did you utilize to examine the sound? And I swear to God, Mr. Dixon looked, he, he looked at the court and said, my ears, my lady. Yeah? <laughs> you came here as a sound expert and you brought your fucking ears. Yeah, I was well, just kind of my thing. I don't know where I am, perhaps, no ba. Because, no, this is the thing that upsets me. White people like to act like they are not incompetent, Joe. Me, I've worked with a lot of incompetent white people, but now they, the media likes to make it like white people are not incompetent. Like, there's not an unfinished bridge in town today, in the city center. There's an unfinished bridge. No one ever asked white people who got the tender for that bridge. <laughs> I did my investigation. Apparently some guy, I think in the 80s, he built the bridge, messed it up. A big engineer messed it up and killed himself. Yeah. Killed himself, guy. Ha, 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 ha. Why would you kill yourself over a bridge, Bobo? <laughs> oh, man, if it was the ANC guy, he'll still be denying that bridge now. <laughs> Till this day. I, I'm not sure if, did you give the tender to me, my company? In fact, I think we need to set up a commission to investigate if your bridge is the same as my bridge. When you say bridge, it, it's the same thing, because our definition of bridge could be different. You never know. There'll be a commission, it'll be on, bro. You're not gonna kill yourself. Jay. Guys will be in front of parliament going, no, the only bridge I remember was when I finished my trick and I did a bridging course. <laughs> but otherwise, I do, I'm not aware of a bridge? No, no, I'm not. Me, so yeah, I just walk on the water. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> if there's one thing Oscar taught us in this trial, is 
to cry, guys. When you're in court, oh, I cry, Baba. You must cry, because Oscar was crying. Fuck, hey, Oscar was crying. You know when Oscar was crying, there was not hanging. You know that's not. I was like, yo, Oscar, no, you are reaching new levels now of crying. I was like, yo, Oscar is crying, guys. But there's this. You know why Oscar cried? Because white people. Because white people never think of jail. That's why when they're in court for the first time, that's the first time they've ever thought of jail. Black people, ah, oh, Joe, we think of jail at least twice a day, at least. <laughs> As you are eating your breakfast today, you're going, yeah, let's just avoid this thing today. Let us. <laughs> jail. I mean, guys, think of Chup Chup. Chup Chup was in court for almost a year. Didn't cry once. Why? He was ready here. Yeah. Here. Yeah. Oh, Chup Chup was ahead of his time. Yeah, he was like, no, I mean, I've thought of this thing. I'm going, it's finishing club. Oscar crying. <laughs> white people have a stupid idea of jail. Have you ever, my white friends always go, Lisa, if you ever end up in jail, if you ever end up in jail, just don't pick up the soap. <laughs> you know, you've heard that thing, just don't pick up the soap. Like the guy who's going to rape you, he has to trick you. No, he doesn't have to trick you. <laughs> the guy's not going to be, brother, now, nah, if you have the time, if you're not busy, if you're not busy. Can you just help me with the sound quickly? <laughs> He's gonna fuck you whenever he wants. That's. And some people, here's the thing some people are not happy with the verdict that Oscar is only gonna spend such a short time in jail. Some people are upset, some people are protesting, right to complain. Listen, you have to respect the law, you have to respect the verdict. I didn't have a problem with it. What I did have a problem with is the idea of people coming out of jail on good behavior. Because let's look at where you're behaving. You are behaving in jail. That is not where we want you to behave. We want you to behave when you are here. When you are at Tasha's, do not shoot the salad. <laughs> like, no, don't. Oscar Pistorius shot a gun at Tasha's. I mean, really, guy. Calm down. He's shooting guns at Tasha's. But Oscar, Oscar still has his fans. You know Oscar's fans? Yo, Oscar's fans, Joe. They don't care. We must pray for Oscar. We must pray for Oscar. Oscar's our hero. But if Oscar had killed a rhino, you! <laughs> Guys, kill a rhino now. White people will fuck you up Joe, for a rhino. Ha, ah, a rhino. Even a lion. You saw that lion, Cecil. Kill a lion. White people will fucking go mad for a lion. <laughs> As black people, we don't give a shit about a rhino. We pretend. Every time there's white people around, we're like, yeah, the rhino. Otherwise, we, in our spare time, oh, fuck that. No black person thinks of a rhino in their spare time. Never. <laughs> Even Jacob Zuma, when he's reading the State of the Nation, and then the rhino pops up, oh, he's also surprised. Because you know the president, he's just read the speech for the first time. So when he's surprised, you ask, the whole country is surprised. It's like, we're all like, he's there going, we must protect the rhino? <laughs> Conja, which one is the rhino? <laughs> it's the one with the horn. Okay, okay. <laughs> president is, president is, a, is a strange guy. You know what the thing that trips me up the most about the president? I found out the president doesn't drink. You know how much of a mind fuck that is? He does all this crazy shit sober. Like... <laughs> <laughs> like, like everything it does. No, I was fully, I was sober, I was sober. <laughs> ah, shit, that, that really finished me. I was like, no, I mean, I'm sh surely you take something. No, I'm clean, I'm clean, I'm clean. <laughs> and also, as a country, we can't have a president who loves pussy. That is the worst thing ever. No, the president, come on, guys, the president loves pussy. Like the president, no, the president loves pussy. He does, that's what he does. Why do you think the president giggles in the middle of the state of the nation? He's taking a pussy right there. <laughs> right there and then. Listen, we must develop the info. <laughs> He's thinking round three, Makuma. Because <laughs> that's how old people fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Show lousy. The Oscar Pistorius trial went on for too long. 
Too long. Why? Because Oscar has a big house. If you kill someone in a big house, oh, your story can go on forever. I went upstairs into the patio. Then I went to the kitchen. Then I went to the study. Then I went to the spare bedroom. Then I went to the pool. Then I went down to Koroto. I heard a noise at the passage. I shot. Oh, mistake. Long story. If that thing happened in, in Kailicha at the RTP house, shortest story ever. Short, short. Court case one day. How do you know there was an intruder? Are you sure? Yeah, they even touched me on their way out. There's no mystery in RTP. If you, show, if you shot someone in RTP, everyone knows what happens. There's no mystery. <laughs> Oscar Pistorius. But there were some things in the Oscar Pistorius trial where they were like, they were like, Oscar, uh, I think it was the, the Sunday Times reported that Oscar Pistorius um, was watching pornography two hours before he killed the Reverse Do you guys remember that? I was like, so how is that relevant? All of you motherfuckers are watching porn. <laughs> they all like to pretend like they don't watch porn. Why do you, you want data for what? Always asking for that. The lunch and elite that was <laughs> in the need that. You want to watch porn? Yo, everyone, everyone watches porn. You know how I know everyone watches porn? Because 37% of what's consumed on the internet is pornography. 37% is the most searched thing on the internet. So, why is it when I Type the letter P on the Google search engine. They fuck around like they don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> you know when you say P, Pinocchio? Hey, now, who is Googling Pinocchio? I want pornography. Porno. <laughs> Guys, have you, ever, have you ever watched porn? Have you ever watched porn? <laughs> have you ever watched porn? And then that thing pops up at the end and they always go, would you like to share this with your Twitter friends? No! <laughs> As soon as I'm done, I'm deleting the history. That's what we do. First things first. History, click. Today's history, gone. <laughs> Delete the fucking history. That's what we do. And ladies, it's got nothing to do with you. And if you still don't believe me, ladies, that your man watches pornography, I'll give you an example. If this has ever happened to you, if this has ever happened to you, you're sitting with your man, sitting with him, you guys are hanging out, then you say to him, baby, my device just died. I just want to check my email for, just, for two minutes. Just two minutes. I just want to check my email. He looks at you and goes, okay, just give me 30 seconds. <laughs> He's logging out. <laughs> because the shit we're watching is rock and roll. <laughs> and ladies, here's the thing, ladies. Ladies, it's got nothing to do with you. It's got, like, guys will watch porn, even if they're in their happiest relationship. It's not a personal thing. We just like pornography as guys. That's it. You take it personally. Oh, am I not making you happy? No, you are making me very happy. It's just, I like this as well. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies, sometimes, don't stress about these things. Don't stress at all. Because as women, you stress too much. And I know this because every woman here tried to, you, you, your whole life, you spend trying to look 19. That's why you have so many creams. There's a cream for everything that's aging in your body. You even have a cream for your elbow. I'm like, my man, your elbow is fucked up. Like your elbow is born fucked up. Why are you trying to sort out your elbows? Like think of it as guys, we don't care. Guys, guys, we don't care. I, like I'm 32 years old. I'm 32 years old. My testicles, 95. I don't have a problem. My, my penis and my testicles, two different ages. Like my balls, they look like they are ready to retire. They took a package. <laughs> They're cashing up at Sunlam. No, I've been working for 40 years. I want to leave. <laughs> they always just, Aah. they look tired. Like my balls look like they were in a struggle, my man. Like they don't give a fuck. That's what my balls look like. But my penis is 32. Good to go. I see it. I see it. I see it. I see it. But there's no man who's ever thought of a cream to reverse. The aging of the pulse. We don't give a fuck. We're like, yes, partner. What's the problem? It works. <laughs> the pulse work. What is the problem? We don't care. Women don't stress. I feel like when Jesus turned water into wine, there was a woman stressing Jesus out. <laughs> Jesus made wine for everyone. There's a party and there's a woman going, sorry, Jesus. <laughs> sorry, Jesus. 
I'm not in semi suit one. <laughs> and Jesus is like, no, I've got house wine for everyone. House, it's house, it's red. Come on, just drink. You are Jesus. I'm not in the hand, just try. You are Jesus. It's party, Zako. You are. <laughs> Jesus is stressed out. You know, Jesus is stressed out. Like, but I made wine. These people should be happy. Not women, uh uh. They want more. <laughs> want preference. You, Jesus, but I'm being a nine in the savannah. How are you going to be bad mouthing Jesus? <laughs> Do you know Nelson Mandela said that uh, uh, the ANC will rule till Jesus comes back? What if Jesus does come back? And he wants to be the leader of the ANC. But then now they have to tell him, no, that can't happen. Because you know there's factions and, and Jesus is there. And then Jesus does, you know, he just comes there as a neutral. Yeah, he's, he's like, yeah, but I'm Jesus. Then, you know, all the, all the, all the caters will form a caucus. Top four. <laughs> Top four falling a caucus. And then Jesus, is there. Jesus will be standing there because of it. He's there. Then ja Jacob, Cyril, Bale, Kambete, and Gwede. That's the top four, is it? Yeah, top four. Yeah, that's top four. No, I'm very aware of my politics. Yeah, but top four, top four. I don't know the DA top four. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know the DA top four. But um, so Cyril will be there. Cyril. No, no, I can't. He's going to ask me about Margana and then now. <laughs> He's going to ask me what I meant, but when I said concomitant. <laughs> and, and, and Jacob. No, no, I will, I am not going to talk to him. I will never. I've got Mark Maharaj to speak <laughs> to him on my behalf. I will not do that. <laughs> and, then, and then there'll be Uncle Guerrejo. Uncle Guerrejo. Comrade SG will come there. No, I don't, I don't have a problem. I talk to him. I never really. <laughs> no, shh. Guerrejo, he can hear you. No, I must marry. I must marry. I can hear him. I can hear him. I can tell him. No problem. I don't have a problem. Okay, go tell him. Go tell him. So, uh, Comrade Jess, we are just uh, in this organization. Para should you all the way to the top. It's not how this organization works. We're 104 years old. We're now you maybe a thousand, thousand years old. But in this organization, we have structures. Yeah. We can't just come out of nowhere, wherever you come from, and think you are just going to fall into the structures of the organization. Do you even have a base? You don't have a base. Women's League, Youth League, South Africa, Communist League, nothing. But you think we're just going to parachute with the top? No, we can't do that. Were you even in Mangaung? Nothing. You might be in Mangaung. Because we were aware of your spirit in Mangaung, but physically you had to be there as well. Because we have to place you where you are within the movement, you know. Now to just come out of nowhere and say, no, I want to run the organization, you can't do that. Do you even belong to a branch? You don't belong to a branch. My advice is to go back to Jerusalem, form a branch, and then, I mean, we're going to talk from there. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine the confusion on Jesus' face? A branch? <laughs> and then he'll fly off. Because <laughs> that's how Jesus rolls. <laughs> yeah, man. Here's the thing. I make fun of politicians. Some people always, oh, why are you making fun of politicians? Ah, because, you know, they work for me. If you pay tax, ah, oh, they work for you, those people. They are civil servants. They are not God. They are civil servants. Keyword, servant. Mina, civil. <laughs> civil servants. So it's like, uh, it's like someone poking fun for the people who work for them. I started eating well, started eating well, which I... Eating well, the lifestyle change and buying healthier food and all that stuff. I hate that stuff, but it's good for me, so I do it. I find myself shopping at Woolworths. You know, Woolworths is the only shop in the world, nah, in the world, that will put you under pressure in your own house. Have you ever bought things at Woolworths? You buy things at Woolworths. It says, sell by 26, use by 27. Hey, you're giving me 24 hours. Like, now you're in your kitchen, you're panicking. Everything is expired. <laughs> You've got carrots, peanut butter, chicken, all expiring. Now you have to make something. You are turning into Makai. <laughs> you are under pressure. <laughs> ah, shit. Woolworths. Woolworths will put you under pressure. You ever go to someone's house? Oh, Leise. Especially white people. White people like to act like they were experimenting with food. 
Lisa, you must try my strawberry and biltong salad, Lisa. My strawberry and biltong salad. You're like, who the hell puts together strawberry and biltong? You went to Woolworths, you bought these things, you're under pressure, you put them together. Now you're going to act like a... Hey, this person. This person thinks I'm a, I'm a fucking idiot. Right? No, bruh. We know exactly what happened. <laughs> People are crazy. So here's the thing. I got so cocky because now I cook. What I decided to do is to enter MasterChef. Called my agent. I said, can you please make sure I am somehow on MasterChef because I believe I can cook. And then they, luckily, two months later, they had Celebrity MasterChef, and they tried to get me on Celebrity MasterChef. I am set to announce I was eliminated before the real eliminations. <laughs> you know what they're like, mm -hmm, please. Because what happens is they simulate the show. So they, they give you real life scenarios to check if you can cook because they don't want to find out that you can't cook on the actual show because that's a disaster. <laughs> so here's the thing, so I'm there. So I'm there, I'm cooking and things are just packing out. And first of all, fuck those judges because they take their food too seriously. I was watching, listen, I was watching an episode of MasterChef and the judge looked at the contestant and said, I just don't like the way the garlic is coming through. My man, have you ever met garlic that does not come through? <laughs> who, who here has just met humble garlic? Garlic that just sits in the plate, I will not smell, I'll just sit here. Garlic will come the fuck through, that's what it does. It's like beetroot, disrespectful vegetables. Beetroot and garlic. Beetroot is the only vegetable that will turn your Sunday lunch into a strawberry smoothie. <laughs> beetroot doesn't give a fuck, because when beetroot is in a plate, everyone must be red. <laughs> you know, because you have the peas. The peas are there. Potatoes. You have the rice. Everyone is there in the plate, just chilling, having a good time. Carrots, everyone's there. Beetroot comes. They have tech, tech, no? Tech, tech, tech. And everyone is red. Everyone in the place is like, oh, Petrut, Kayeke, Petrut, man. You know, I'm Petrut, I'm for it. Kayeke, man, Petrut, man. Yeah, this is Shalela, but we know this song. Yeah, Petrut, I'm for it. And Petrut is there, check, Kalamasim, check, check, check. Petrut doesn't give a fuck. So even Pop, you know how Pop, Pop is always acting tough. Oh, I'm tough, I'm tough. But when Petrut is in the plate, he's like, okay, better, better, better. Better, better, look, you're trying to police, you better, better. <laughs> you check now, <nah>, check. <laughs> Do you know what I believe about Petrut? Because it's so ungovernable and it's red. I strongly believe Petrut is the EFF of food. Because <laughs> when Petrut is in the plate, he's like, this plate will be ungovernable. Check. <laughs> And God, tech. Kali kaki pitrut. Yo, pitrut. So this is how I got eliminated on Master Chef. So I'm there, I'm there, and uh, <laughs> you know when you cook something, guys. This has happened to everyone. You know when you're cooking. You have the best intentions. You have this thing that you want to cook in your mind. But it's not manifesting itself here, here. You know, you're cooking a stew, but this stew is not the one. Now I'm there, I'm looking at the, at the chefs. I'm like, hey, chef? Sorry, chef? First of all, uh, white people, if a black person does this, né? and then speaks afterwards, hey, the thing that's coming next. When a black person is doing this, you must know. If, What's coming next is, is straw and cock. <laughs> so I'm there going, sorry, chef. So, sorry, chef. <laughs> chef, my meal is not going, it's not going right. <laughs> so I've got a plan I want to chef. Yeah. So I just want to know, do you have no rock, chef? Jay Norox, hey, one, just I hit it, one, two, one, two, the longest. <laughs> and you know Norox will fix that shit. You think, oh, I didn't put enough vegetables. Fucking Norox, man. Norox will fix your shit. <laughs> Norox. Don't play games with Norox, Joe. <laughs> it's cool, man.
It's all good. But I, I remember when I was young. You know, when I was young, I went, the first school I ever went to in my life, 1990, was a school at uh, corner 108, NY 108 and 112 called Eloise. And I remember, I remember when I was at school, we always used to go on these outings as a school. But they always go to Omo, you go to an Omo factory, Coca-Cola factory, then you're like, why are we here? You know, <laughs> you know when you're like, what's going on, why? And they always tell you stupid things. Yeah, if you work hard, now you can pack these boxes. Fuck it. It's like they were trying to train us to be workers, those fuckers, bro. Because when you went to a white school with all these white kids, Joe, you are there, you are at the aquarium, you are going to the zoo. No one is packing, fuck all boxes, Joe. <laughs> yes, it's apartheid. You know, when I went to school, you couldn't pass a grade, ne? You could pass all your subjects. But if you didn't pass Afrikaans, you couldn't progress to the next standard. You could, I'm not, hey guys, you, I don't think you understand. You, you born free fuckers, you know nothing. <laughs> you couldn't pass, Joe. You, you, they would send you back to where you came from. They're like, hey, 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 you didn't pass Africans. And there were other black guys in the school who did all their subjects in Africans. We used to respect those guys, Joe. Hmm? They used to walk around school with books written, Veskinde. You like, yo. <laughs> Veskinde, Baba. We're like, yo, I know Veskinde, Veskinde. <laughs> Well, people, can you imagine you're doing a medicine course? You'd fail. <laughs> you would fail. Question one. That's question one. Gone. Gone. Well, what are you? What's your answer? Nothing. You fucked. You're fucked. But you know we survived, Chief. We are playing you. <laughs> we survived. We are here. It's crazy. Have you ever been in an exam, guys? Yeah, you are in an exam, but this exam is not the one, the one. You know when you know, hey, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't study here. Yeah. We're hoping for the best. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then they always gave, remember they always gave you the paper two minutes before? They always gave you the paper. Two minutes, just so that it doesn't shock you when it's time to write. You have the time just to look through and gauge or know what's going on. <laughs> Then you, they give you the paper and then there's, you know, there's always the clock. The clock in the front to tell you how much time is left. There's an invigilator. It's not an invigilator, it's just your gym teacher walking around. I don't know why we're calling him an invigilator all of a sudden. And he's there walking like a Nazi. <laughs> Remember? <laughs> walking down the aisles, John. <laughs> So, so the exam starts, so invigilators walking around, they give you the thing two minutes, then you look at your paper, start looking. Yo, yo. You know when you know fuck all, you're nothing, you're like, you walk, you walk. And then the exam starts, hey, now, now, now you are, now you are there now. They are calling the invigilator for stupid things. So, sorry, ma'am. So, sorry, ma'am. So, so, sorry, ma'am. The practical that we did in February no? doesn't count towards this mark. We are saying any Practical twenty percent, thirty-nine, forty. Okay. Sorry, ma'am. What I'm trying to find out is how much do I need up, man? So, sorry, ma'am. How much did I get go go February, panga? And the Luisa just right, Luisa just right. I know you know something. Just right, something. Stop asking me stupid questions. Okay, ma'am. So shout out. Other children are writing. So shout out. Okay, okay, I'm going to write. Bye. Oh, bye, oh, bye. Oh, no, you're writing. Okay. Then you get confident because there's some things now that you know. Okay, no, no, you, 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 are you, okay. I like you, 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 and then you, and then what happens is you look up and then everyone is using a ruler. Now you're confused. 
The man go irula inge na irula. The man ila way. The man. Why do we need a ruler? For what? For what question? What question? There's always that guy in the corner who does everything higher grade. He's got a compass. For none. What question is a compass? <laughs> and then, and then you resort to your old tricks. So, sorry, ma'am. How far you still get back? It's cold, man. Just turn down the, the air conditioning and you know, it's cold, yeah. <laughs> no, nah, it was crazy, man. School, yo, school was school was rough, man. School was rough. I remember, I remember in school when I first when I first uh, uh, started hanging out with white people, then you know, you're hanging out with white people. And there was a friend of mine, Jonathan, and I remember him eating a tuna sandwich. Hey, tuna. Because in my life, tuna sandwich is a thing of Christmas. <laughs> now this guy, it's a Tuesday. It's quarter past ten. He's eating a tuna sandwich. I'm confused. You know when your system is shocked in jail, you know what's going on. And you're asking, so, sorry, so you kept it since December? <laughs> no, no. No, my mother made it. My mother made it this morning. Because you know what's waiting for you in your lunchbox? Peanut butter sandwich, brown bread. That is the, yo, that's the worst sandwich ever. In terms of sandwiches, that is the worst sandwich you could ever have in your life. Because I don't know what happens to that sandwich between the time you pack it and the time you open it. It's like that sandwich, is, is, it just becomes stronger. I don't know if there's a gym in my lunchbox. I don't know. All I know is that when I packed it, you were soft. Now you are a tough ass motherfucker. <laughs> then you start chewing. Have you ever tried to a peanut butter sandwich? You're chewing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then the peanut butter sandwich is like, no, chew, chew, chew. <laughs> then you are chewing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then when it gets here, it goes, Ozonya Gangogo. Ozonya Gangogo. Then it starts choking you, fuck you. <laughs> fuck your life, fuck your children, fuck everything. Ah. Then you're dying, you're reaching for Oros. Oros is like, I'm not involved. I'm not involved. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, don't fuck with a peanut butter sandwich. It will kill you. <laughs> Yeah, colored people, you call it chokers. I mean, that thing is just a sandwich to black people. You don't have to name every... You don't, colored people, you don't have to give everything a nickname, guys. <laughs> I remember going to these schools, and I remember the craziest thing. You know what I remember? I remember so many sports. You know when you're there, they, you said this is, uh, this is, this is uh, uh, badminton's uh, uh, a court. Okay, okay. You can play squash over there. Okay, okay. We have a swimming pool. We'll keep that as an option. <laughs> so many, six rugby fields, hmm? cricket, everything. But with all those opportunities, black women only played one sport, netball. There's nothing black women love more than netball. They take it way too seriously. You need to find that for me. A defender. <laughs> <laughs> I don't respect netball. You know why I don't respect netball? Because you don't get netball shoes. If your sport doesn't have its own shoes, full tack. <laughs> full tacky. It's like golf. I don't respect golf. Some people take themselves seriously when they play golf. When you get your tender, now you're playing golf forward. <laughs> Now you are playing golf. For what? Why are you playing golf? Play soccer, man. What you grew up playing, now you are playing golf. I hate golf. Golf is not a real sport. Because I just believe if a fat person can beat you at a sport, it's not a real sport. <laughs> I'm not saying fat people <laughs> shouldn't play sport. I'm saying they shouldn't win. You are fat. Tag. <laughs> For tag key. For tag key. <laughs> it's the same with cricket. People love the Proteas. The Proteas could fuck up. People, yo, we love the Proteas. 
Love the protests too much. The protests suck, guys. They suck. And people always go, at least they're in the top 10. They, at least they're in the top 10. Yeah, top 10 in a sport that's played by 10 countries. Foot tag. <laughs> Nobody. China doesn't play cricket. Russia doesn't play. America doesn't play. Tell me Bangladesh plays. Oh, Bangladesh. <laughs> Sri Lanka. People always use this other argument. They always go, at least they have passion. OK, how do you measure passion? What, OK, I'll, I'll give it to you in legal terms. What instruments did you utilize <laughs> to examine the passion? It's either you have the World Cup or you don't. Finish and clear. They don't have the World Cup. South Africa lost two games in the group stages of the World Cup. Two games in the group stages of the World Cup. And when they asked A.B. de Villiers, who's the captain? What's going on? He said, we'll make it up in the quarterfinal. Quarterfinal! <laughs> if, you, if you lose two games in the group stages in soccer, there's fuck all quarterfinal. <laughs> in fact, you're doing a press conference at home. <laughs> These guys are still confident about a quarterfinal <laughs> cricket. I foot sack cricket. I don't have time for cricket. <laughs> Soccer, that's a sport, Joe. Football, I yeah, wonder that's a sport, that one. That's a sport. But hey, my fan, my fan, I, uh, <laughs> Me, I blame the coaches. Remember that one coach we had? Uh, Santa, it was a Santana. He didn't win the World Cup with Ronaldinho with a Polando. Ne? And then you came here. You think you are going to win the World Cup with Vlagas? I mean, really. <laughs> If you couldn't win with Ronaldinho, forget Vulagas, my man, it's not gonna happen. <laughs> Nombete is good, but not World Cup good for. <laughs> <laughs> then we had Carlos Pereira. Yo, Carlos Pereira. Worst coach ever. Carlos Pereira was a, was a fraud, guys. Fraud, fraud, fraud from the beginning. I remember we used to, if you beat tough opposition, we beat Cameroon 2 1. Carlos Pereira would be at a press conference, he'd be there. The journalists are there, ready to praise him. Carlos, you beat such tough opposition. How did you do it? Yeah, we play very good uh, football. I think our midfield, we very strong. We improve uh, all the aspects. We pass the ball very good. Nombeta is good. He scored two goals. He take opportunity. It's a good result. But also, we very lucky because he, the ball, the ball hit the crossbar two times. And sometimes football you lack. And we take, uh, we take point and we move on to the next game. Next game comes, he loses 2-0 to Swaziland. <laughs> the press is there waiting. My man, what happened? You lost 2-0 to Swaziland. What happened? Sorry, I know I understand. I need translator. <laughs> I like Suarez, man. I always watch Suarez. He's a good player. All the crazy things he does. He's still a, he's, you don't have to like him, but he scores goals. He's, he's, a, he's a blazing player. I remember when they were playing, uh, were they playing? They were playing uh, Manchester United. When he was still in Liverpool, they were playing Manchester United. And he called Patrice Evra, who's a black player, he called him a nigger. Ah, the British press went crazy. He's a disgrace to the game. He should never be allowed to play. He's a disgrace to the game. I was with them until I found out how much money Patrice Evra earns. A hundred thousand pounds a week. Guys, do your Vascender in your own time. <laughs> That's about two million rand a week to play football. Guys, for that kind of money, there is Fuck all anyone in here can say to upset me. <laughs> I'll in, hey, guys, I'll invite you to my house to call me a nigger. I don't give a fuck. I'll sit you down. I'll make you cough. I'll be like, say it here. Say it here. <laughs> and you'll have energy. You are a nigger. I'm like, I'm so upset. I'm buying another yacht. Yes. <laughs> no, don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying racism is acceptable. I'm not saying money should buy you happiness. I'm just saying that kind of money should make you at least nigger proof. <laughs> you don't have the same problems as your average black person. Because mm -hmm. your average black person is dealing with real problems. Ellerins wants the money for the room divider. <laughs> it's month end. <laughs> when are you paying back the plasma? <laughs> Another intervention I'd like to have uh, with my uh, comrades. Uh, Amanda comrades, Amanda comrades, uh, comrades. There are 365 days to go to the beach. 
We don't all have to go on the same day. <laughs> Please, Kadas, go, go on your. <laughs> <laughs> like black people only go to the beach on the 1st of January and if you watch SABC One News on the 2nd of January there are all these kids left at the beach by their parents <laughs> just kids cry <laughs> then you I always wonder I always wonder to myself as a parent you left the house with two children now there's one where are you thinking maybe Geshem where do you think the other one is like, it's a crazy thing, man. <laughs> you left your child at the beach, ma'am. Go fetch your child at the beach. But, so, I've, I've been lucky in my career, I guess. I've been lucky. <clears throat> Thank you for your support and stuff. For those who support, of course. I mean, <clears throat> it's, really, it's really kind of, because... Here's the thing, on Monday, I know this is great. On Monday, we find, we find out if we get nominated for a third Emmy thing. So on a Monday, they'll make the announcement um, from France and they'll send us a text. It's crazy, that's how they let you know. Here's a text, you made it. <laughs> I remember the, last, the first time we went to the Emmys and I was in New York, that's when Nelson Mandela passed away. And I was there watching TV and then, <laughs> and it's like breaking news. And I was like, fuck it, CNN is always breaking news. And then Msholozi comes. You know when Msholozi comes? Then I'm like, oh, fuck. You know, you're like, oh, you're a hot. What happened? What happened? No. Breaking news. And then and the funniest thing happened. Then I'm like, okay, volume. I put up the volume. Then he's, and then Msholozi, I am sad to, to, to announce that Madiba is no more. And then the next commentary from CNN is that, as you can see from the way, a South African president is reading that speech. He's a bit distraught. I'm like, no, he reads like that all the time. <laughs> oh, distraught, not distraught. Yeah, that's his thing. Even if he was happy, that's how we'd read the thing. <laughs> it's so funny. And then, and then I, you know, when I got home, the next day it was the memorial of uh, Nelson Mandela at FNB. Comrades, I'd like to categorically state that, that it was not my intention to boom Sholos. I was sitting there, people started booing. I was like, is that pollution, Jan? That's pollution. Boo, 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 boo. You know when you're booing, you're not even sure. Yeah, we're booing. Tack, boo, 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 boo. Then the funniest thing happened, because uh, Jackson Mtembu, who was then the spokesperson of the ANC, then came out in the press and he said, eh, eh, we will find these booers and deal with them. I was like, I've been waiting for the day where we moor the boas. Let us moor the boas. When are we mooring the boas? I mean, I've been waiting. I thought, I mean, come on. All of us are waiting to just moor the boas. You tack. <laughs> huh? The boas, come on, guys, we moor the boas. <laughs> this is the favorite part of my show because white people are like, is he talking about boas or boas? <laughs> no, I'm talking about boas. Boa. Are you a boa? Are you a boa? Then you are a boa. If you're not a poor, then don't worry, don't worry. This doesn't concern you. But if you are a poor, then you are a poor. What can I do? <laughs> don't, don't, don't make your problems mine. If you are a poor, you are a poor. Sorry. <laughs> Some people still haven't laughed. I won't laugh. That joke is racist. Then you are a poor yourself. You are a poor. You're pooing my jokes. That's your problem. We are a poor. <laughs> that's that's cool. You going out? Are you going out? Going out? Yeah. Ladies, uh, ladies, uh, because I, I, you know, I, you know, I, I, have a, I have a soft spot for the ladies. Um, ladies, I just want to give you some advice now. If a guy is hitting on you at three in the morning, you are his last option, Shem. <laughs> I know. <laughs> you know when they say, like, my man, I like, look, my man. <laughs> you are his last, last of three. You are three. You are just in merchants, in merchants. 
um, so I remember the one time I went, um, I went out with my ex-girlfriend, uh, and we went to Tabu in Johannesburg. So we're chilling in, in the car, and this is what happens. She's taking off her shoes because she was driving in sneakers. Now she's putting on heels. I'm waiting on this side. I don't, I don't drive at all. Me, I'm a passenger. I'm on the passenger side. She's the one who's driving. She can drive, got a license and everything, qualified. <laughs> she's qualified. So I, I don't drive. I don't drive at all. And people know that about me. But here's another thing. Here's another thing. If I did ever drive, it would be a left hand. Because I'm used to the passengers. <laughs> You know, in the passengers, that's where I'm most comfortable. Why now would I move to this side? Now I'm confused. I'm right, well done, right, right. <laughs> so she's there. She's <clears throat> so here, there she is. She takes off her shoes and uh, she's putting on her heels to look sexy for the club. I'm like, no, look sexy, it's good. But now I'm looking to my left. <clears throat> There's a guy, you know, working a spanner. Working the spanner into the start. <laughs> now I'm like, no, I've, I've got friends also who have cars was, where you start like this. But then I look, I'm like, no, but I know the key of this guy. This thing doesn't start like this. This guy, this guy is, st is stealing this thing. I'm like, no, when I'm a man, you are stealing this thing. This thing is being stolen. So I'm like, listen here, baby, this is what's going to happen. Well, I want to be very responsible citizens. We are going to do the most responsible thing as citizens. We are going to mind our own business. Yes. <laughs> she goes, okay. Now we get out the car. Get out. And we stand. You know when you're getting out the car, the guy, the guy is stealing a car here. Now you have to pretend like you can't see it. <laughs> and we're standing here. Now we're standing here. Like, well, now we're making small talk. Ah, yes, you know, and then, yeah, and then, I saw, so, so, hey, nah, then, yeah, that, and then, yeah, nah, nah. I don't know what happens in her mind. She decides to go, I'm going to be Cat Blanche. You know, Cat Blanche, third degree, Deborah Pei Tanjay. Pulls out a camera, starts filming this thing. This guy sees her, starts running towards her. Check one last web. I'm like, now I've got three seconds to decide if I want to be a staring. <laughs> Now, here's the thing. Some people laugh, some people didn't laugh. Black people know exactly what they're staring at. White people have fuck all idea what they're staring at. I will explain to you, because I'm trying to unite the country. If you, where does the word staring come from? It comes from the 1980s, 1990s, because when shows used to start back in the days, they used to say staring, whoever it was. Now, because of Bandu education, we said staring. And then, if you remember, it would list the show, the show cast. It would list the cast of the show in order of priority. So if it was a Michael Dudikoff show or movie, it would say Michael Dudikoff. And therefore, he is the staring. <laughs> Whoever was named first was the staring. Chinkol Fandam was the staring. Now you ask yourself, what's so special about the staring? I will fucking tell you. A staring never fucking dies, brother. <laughs> ever. Ever, 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 ever. There could be an explosion. You know how dope a staring is? There's one, uh, is it double impact? Where it dies, and then it comes back. That's a staring. You can't just die as a staring. There must be an explanation or you're coming back, but you can't just fucking die. Steven Seagal, has he ever died in a movie? Never. Why? He's a fucking staring. <laughs> Yeah? Even Arnold Schwarzenegger, he's like, I'll be back. He's going to fuck you up because he's just staring. But you white people know fuck all about staring. That's why you made Expendables. Now there's staring in the whole movie. <laughs> Eight starings. It doesn't work like that. There can only be one fucking staring. Only one. You can't have all the staring in one movie. You can't. Stop fucking around. You are messing with our minds. We want to support one guy. Where do we send our ancestors now? There's eight of these motherfuckers there. We want to choose one. That's a staring. So back to my story. 
I've got three seconds to decide if I want to be a stirring or not. <laughs> three seconds, three. <laughs> the guy comes, and he, as he's running, I'm like, oh, come on, come on, come on. <laughs> now, every black person or black guy you know has two voices. <laughs> the first voice he uses at work very, very casually, very loosely. He talks about the stomachs. He doesn't give a fuck about the stomachs. But his voice accommodates the stomach's conversation. <laughs> Where he's there going, no, it's all right, bro, it's okay. No. Yo, my name is Kuruleko. In the township, that voice changes. You have your other voice that you use. So at that point of the story, I was using my other Lokshin voice. I said, come, 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 come. Come, come, come. And that, and that voice always comes a fucked up eye. Come, 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 come. No. Then you turn around. No, I'm going to see if 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 i am and I swear to God, as he was, as the guy was walking off, <laughs> he looked at both of us and said, Ah, oh, that's why as black people we don't go far because we stand in each other's way. Tech! <laughs> You guys have been really awesome. Thank you very much. Good night. <laughs>